Hi everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads and I wanted to do a better beater today on a question that many of you may have. You may have some broken old antique jewelry, some pearl jewelry, some heirlooms that have been handed down for you. Many of those are strung on silk cording or silk thread, maybe some cotton thread. The instructions that I give you for the silk thread are gonna be the same as the cotton thread or you may just wanna know how to use that silk thread. So I wanted to do some tips techniques and kind of tricks to repairing and working with some of those older vintage pieces as well as using some of those new techniques for new designs as well. I'm going to be going over the actual silk cording kind of what to do and the silk that I recommend is going to be the griffin silk. I like it because it already has a needle attached to it. There's not too many projects that you're going to do where you need to have you know more than one spool of it. It comes in two meter sections and it's going to come in different sizes. So what are those different sizes? What are the different sections? That's what we're going to go over in this Better Beater episode. We're going to be looking at the sizes according to start. So to start we have, I have here a representation of size 4, size 6, size 8, and size 10. We also carry size 2 in some of like the whiter colors, but some of those beads or some of those are going to get really, really thin as you're working with them. When you're looking at the silk cording, I do prefer this again because the thread comes with a needle attached. And when you're looking at it, it's 2 meters, so you're looking at about 6 feet when working with it. And most projects that you do, that's going to be plenty. If you need it a little bit longer, you can always add thread together, as well as most of the time if you're doing something longer than that, you're going to have multiple pieces anyway and multiple strands. For the silk cording, when you're looking with it, looking at it and working with it, the size four is going to be a 0 0.60 millimeter when you're looking at it. Then you get the 0 0.8, 0 0.7, going up with the six, and then the 0.9 with the 10. So the sizes are around, rounding up to that millimeter size. In addition to that, I actually think it's really helpful, I tell people, to look at those different sizes that that can actually help them determine what size they need based on their bead. It's not an actual science because different beads have different size holes. I actually have a blog about that and what size thread and what size holes different styles of beads have. But generally speaking, if you have about a four millimeter bead, most of the time, a size four thread will go through a four millimeter bead. Six millimeter bead, try a size six. Eight, try an eight, 10, and so forth. Most of the time I'm doing things that are actually knotted with gemstones rather than pearls, I'm gonna be using the size eight. You can check out the chakra necklace for that as well if you're looking for different beads and different silk ideas. We have a number of different YouTube videos on the silk, but nothing really going over it at once. So many things that we get are broken and they need to be repaired and you need to do this knotting. The first thing you wanna do, and I'll open up that nice purple one, is you're gonna open up your silk thread if you are using the Griffin silk. And to open up the thread here, you open up the entire package and it's going to have the needle attached. However, the needle is tucked underneath. So what I'm gonna do is pull that needle out and you can see it's really, really flexible and you can kind of work with it. Undo the thread here and then you're gonna take the whole entire thing off the spool. So that whole seven or so feet off the spool. One thing, especially with the thicker cording, is you wanna stretch that cording when you're working with it. The silk does have some buoyancy and some stretch, especially if you wanna make sure when you are doing the knotting with the silk cord that you get it nice and tight next to the beads. This here is a size eight cording that's used with the, uh, or a size six rather, that's used with six millimeter beads and some chips here that are done on um, a nice green jade color to make sure that there's not extra space between the beads as you're knotting. And there's a video for the knotting, so I'm not gonna go into detail how to kind of quickly knot that. We're just gonna go over the materials and the ends. When you're looking to do that knotting, you don't want it to stretch and then have a ton of space between your knots and your beads. What you wanna do is pre-stretch the actual silk cording. So even if you're a novice, you can still do this, you can still repair that jewelry. Go ahead excuse me, and actually stretch that silk cording. And that's gonna help you to make sure that you don't have any of that extra thing. You can even, if you want to, I've seen people tie kind of weights or clip weights on with some clothespins to the one side and then the other side, hang it over the actual, an actual door. If you really wanna stretch it, leave it for about 20 minutes. I usually just pull it through another piece of cording or once I take it off my whole spool, pull it through there. Another thing I wanna say is keep 
your silk spool. That way when you're done, chances are you'll have extra silk and put it back on the spool so you know exactly what size it is, there's no guessing, and your needle stays intact. If your needle does come unattached or unattached or, or comes undone, look for the flexible beading needles and you can actually use your own and kind of create your own for that if it does come untouched, but it's nice to have it on. So you're gonna take the entire thing off the spool. Once you're done, go ahead and twist it back up. When working with it and taking the entire thing off the spool, there's a number of different options that you have for ending it. One is just the simple, fast tie a knot and glue. No experience needed, just literally tie a knot and glue. This can be done if you're just going to be knotting, say, a fun four millimeter gemstone. This is size eight, I believe, cording. Um, and just doing a loop and a button, kind of getting that boho look with these pearl drops as well. So it doesn't need to be pearls that you're using the silk cording on. You can use it with uh, different styles of beads. And keep in mind, you don't need to put pearls on silk. If you are having trouble tying the knots and getting them nice, I brought back just an 11-0 seed bead tomb. If you're working with pearls and you want that look, but you don't necessarily want to knot in between, a little hint and a trick is to use 11-0 seed beads in between the pearls to get that same look of the knotting without actually doing the knotting. I would still recommend stringing it on the silk cord though because it gives you a different feel than actually putting it on to wire. The other option for the ending is going to be knot covers. The knot covers are my favorite option because they make it look nice and finished at the end. The knot cover options or the options for those endings are going to be a couple different ones here that I have. That I have the regular knot ending here with just a little ball and it has a loop attached. And then another one here that has the knot cover kind of that clamshell going a different way and then a little arching little kind of hook attached. So how do you work with these and how do you use them to end the end of your silk? The other option I have, which sometimes comes in handy if you are repairing an older pearl piece, sometimes you can, if the clasp comes off, that's usually the occurrence with that older pearl piece, right at the end it's gonna come off. Sometimes you can take the last knot, put it into that knot cover, do a lot of glue and fold over it and you won't have to re-knot the entire piece. Most of the time, that's not the case, and unfortunately, you are going to have to re-knot the piece. But if you're starting from scratch, a great ending to use are these knot covers or pearl covers. And then a little hint that I have is actually to use a, an extender chain because that afterwards gives you that option rather than having it be one size to go ahead and make it adjustable that you could link onto different sizes. So how to work with this. Taking again that whole cording off, I'm gonna take it all off, make you dizzy as I'm going through and, and taking this off. And we're gonna pretend that we pre-stretched it. Now, it's annoying at the start, especially if you're knotting, because you have seven feet or so thread, two meters, that you're pulling through. I don't worry about not using the very end or leaving some space because I'm gonna put the knot cover on. You're gonna go ahead and tie a knot. And I'm gonna tie this two times. It's going to depend on your knot cover how many times you're going to be out and what size silk thread you're using. This again is a size eight that I'm using in this amethyst color. And I tie a nice knot here. What I'm going to do then is glue it and trim down that edge. You can use regular super glue to do that. If you don't want to glue, that's fine. You're not required to glue. And what you're going to do is take that pearl or that uh, knot cover and I'm gonna sew with that needle going through the knot cover so that way it's coming out the bottom of the knot cover. What that's gonna do then as I take it the whole way through my thread is at the end it is going to cover that knot. So after I go through and glue it and trim this down and pretend that I glued it, we're just gonna trim it down here and I'm gonna do a no-no and actually burn it down to show you what happens get that nice smoking effect with that nice natural silk. It also gives a nice uh, scent to it here. And this is just the Wildfire bead cord cutter. And I have that glue, kind of glued down now, those ends covered. And all I'm gonna do is, I generally keep this open too until the very end. But just to show you, you're gonna go in here then and close that up with the needle nose pliers. When you close it up, you can see, you don't see it at all. Go ahead and put on a, whatever jump ring you want and close up that plier portion as well. Generally, I'm gonna do that with a round nose pliers 
bending that down right along. Some people will tuck the end into that knot cover. I don't like to tuck it into the knot cover. I like to keep it exposed. And then you'll wanna use a nice ending for that, a jump ring or something to attach it to a clasp. Like I had said, a good idea is actually to do that extender chain. On the other side of the knot cover, I generally will tie a knot. Some people will put their first bead on right away. I like the look of the final knot right next to the end, the end cone here. So I like to go ahead in and make sure that that's nice and close. Again, we will have already have stretched it. And of course, here, make sure that thread goes on the correct side. Tie your knot really, really close to the end. And then you're gonna begin putting your beads on. Between each of the beads, then you can tie a knot and you have that on there and then you'll have a knot that you're really close to at the end. You can also leave this silk exposed. It gives a completely different look and a nice look to it. I'm just going to tie another knot a little bit further down and show you how to put on the ending on the other side. Imagining that we have a bunch of beads that are tied in working with this silk cord. On the other end, I tie a knot because I want a knot prior to my ending. With this one here, it's gonna be a little bit trickier. I actually prefer these ends. With this kind here, you can see that we're basically going to tie a knot, and then this is gonna go around the knot. So if I tie another knot here, this is gonna go around the knot. The little opening or the little arched area is gonna be right at the bottom. I find these really difficult to use. I prefer to use this style of that clamshell. And what I'm gonna do then is tie another knot right near it, because remember this, the first knot is gonna go right before it. And it takes practice. I always say grab a couple spools of your silk cording or grab some um, Chinese knotting cord. I brought this out just to show you that you can just do a knot on each side and practice doing your actual knotting. So I have my next knot that's gonna be pretty close to that first knot. Do a nice tight pull. Tuck that knot inside that clamshell cover. And then you're gonna grab your pliers and you're gonna close that up. Now, I would have had to, to really close that up, I would have had to trim this down ahead of time, but I'm just keeping it attached to the spool because I'm gonna show you that, and it's easier to see. So prior to closing this clamshell up, you would have trimmed down and done a little bit of glue, and that's gonna keep that end on there as well. Again, then you'll attach a jump ring, you'll attach a clasp, I love working with silk cording and working with these knot covers and putting them on. The feel of the jewelry with that silk cording and with the knotting cording is just so nice and flexible versus an actual one that's done on wire. Keep in mind, these knot covers are going to be different than crimp covers, which are just going to be basically that clamshell the second version of the clamshell here without the loop on it. It's gonna cover any sort of knot that you may have made when you're using wire or any knot with a crimp bead as well. So hopefully the idea of these Better Beater episodes are that they may answer questions that you have not seen answered in different videos, give you ideas and make you empowered to go out and actually try working with some of this silk cording. I love this product. I love working with it. I love the feel of it and the weight of it and use it a ton in between my gemstone beads, pearls, doing repairs and so on. So if you get a chance, get some silk cording, try it out, try a bunch of different steps, get a bunch of different endings. You probably even have some somewhere in a jewelry kit as well to work with and be empowered to do your own repairs and your own designs using this fun cording and this fun method. As with all of these Better Beater episodes, comment below and let us know your tips, your tricks, what you love as far as materials, what brands you love, and we keep an eye on those comments and also it helps different community members that may be watching this video. Everyone's gonna have different opinions, everyone has different ideas, different instructions that they use, and we like to see them all because that makes a more educated beating environment. As with everything, if you want to, you can always subscribe to this YouTube channel, give me a little like, and then we'll send you regular updates when we do new tutorials, new Better Beater episodes, as well as product spotlights and design challenges, things that we think that you should know. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Better Beater on the silk cording, and enjoy that new craft of working with this fun kind of vintage cording and fun look.